Welcome to the KTA Coding Failure Analysis Video Training Series. This is part one of a six-part series that describes the field and laboratory techniques that were used to determine why there was intercoat delamination of a coating system applied to a concrete floor. Each part is standalone, but when viewed in order, they present the key findings from an actual project. Familiarization with the project begins with the initial telephone call. During that call, try to collect as much information as possible regarding the problem and ask for the following. Background information such as the surfaces involved, the service environment, details regarding the problem, basically the what, where, and when. Ask for a copy of the specification and the product names and permission to contact the manufacturer. Ask for copies of any correspondence or reports and make plans to visit the site. The following shows the types of questions that are asked on site to become familiar with the work that was performed and the nature of the problem. At the project site, interview as many people as possible, especially those at the field level. They often are more attuned to the problem than the upper management. Separate statements of fact from opinion and force yourself to stay open-minded during your work. Introduce yourself and ask each person to describe the problem as they see it. I'm the maintenance supervisor of the building here, and my job was to get this uh, floor recoated. Uh, I ordered the, pe the, the base coat and the clear coat, and after the first clear coat, I noticed blistering and tried popping the blisters and then giving it the second coat, and they're still there. Next, ask when the work was done. I probably started the job around 6 a.m. This was this week, two weeks ago? A, uh, week, ago. a week ago. Ask the what the coating system was used. Well, it's, it's an epoxy two-part paint mm -hmm. system. Okay, and that's the beige? Right. Okay. And then the second coat of the same color. So two coats of the beige epoxy. Okay. Right, but the second coat was not reduced at all. No, okay, no so thinner. Okay, so you put the first coat on on August 15th. Right. Second coat followed the next day. August 16th, 24 August hours 16th. later. Okay. And after the the second coat was put down, flakes were broadcasted throughout the room okay. to stick onto the base coat. And then after the floor was completed with the broadcasting of the, the flakes, mm -hmm. uh, waited another 24 hours with a fan blowing on it, doors open. Okay. Is the clear coat an epoxy also? Uh, it's a single component. That's a single component? Right. Okay. So you put your first coat of clear on on August 17th. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming then you waited another 24 hours to, the, to August 18th. Right and put your second coat of a clear on. Right. Ask if there was a specification or product data sheet or any inspection reports. Oh, okay. So I see you, you put down a, uh, this is your epoxy. Right. Your base coat. Base coat. And then you put a, uh, oh, I see now you put a moisture cured urethane finish coat on top of your epoxy coating system. Right. That's, that's your standard floor system. Are there any inspection reports or any kind of work documentation you did about showing how the work was done? No, there wasn't. Ask about any containers of paint left over from the job. I'm assuming you have samples of all these coatings everywhere that I could. Yes, I do. Ask about surface preparation. It was prepared the day before. And what did you do to prepare it? Uh, abraded it with a 60 grit open grain uh, paper, swept it, and then wiped, mopped uh, with a simple green multi-purpose uh, mixture. Find out if moisture tests were performed. I had a fan blowing on it for the 24 hours and it was dry but I didn't take a test to assure that it was dry. It was visually dry? Yes. Okay. Ask questions about the type and location of the failure. I see some blistering here. So there's a little bit of blistering right here in front of the door. Where else do we have a blistering problem? It seems like it's in the areas that had poor ventilation. Uh, once I was done painting, trying to get rid of the odor, I turned the fan around bringing outside air in 
until it was time to go home. Okay, so the fan was sitting here and blowing. Blowing the, the warm air in on the, on the right. Right, right. This is your airflow is coming this way. Yeah. And uh, you would have good airflow here, but probably not as good airflow. Not back, back under the, the, uh, the lab table there, no. The lab table. And this is one of your areas in here where you've had the most. Problems. Probably the worst, yes. I can yes. see your blisters there, and I hear you walking on it. I can actually yes, hear them. Yes, you can hear them popping, it's right. It's like it's separated and cracked. Yeah, right. Ask if any opinions have been given regarding the cause of the problem. The uh, clear cloak blistered because the base coat being an epoxy wasn't quite done curing. They evidently indicated that I didn't wait long enough before applying the clear coat. Ask if you can take samples, including destructive tests, and who will be responsible for repair. I might want to take a core saw and drill some holes in your floor. Would that be possible? Yes, we want to like to, to fix the floor and for future use, know what we did wrong this time, and, and I'd appreciate you doing it, to be honest with you. We'll mutually agree on where we want to cut the core so we don't interrupt the process. We want to get a good representative sample with the core, but we don't want to interrupt the processes and then some place where you can fix it or we can fix it. It really doesn't matter to us. I think we would fix it, right. Keep all of the information you collected in mind when you start conducting the tests. And for this project, the background information revealed the following. The existing floor was overcoated. The floor was cleaned by sanding and detergent washing. Painting consisted of two coats of epoxy, chips broadcast while the epoxy was still damp, then two coats of clear moisture cure urethane. The first coat of epoxy was thinned. All application was done by roller. No inspections were performed, nothing for moisture content of the floor, the ambient conditions during application, or the wet film thickness. Wet samples are available and you're permitted to do destructive tests. Ventilation was accomplished by one open door to the outside and fans blowing in during application and blowing out during final drying. The blisters were prominent along the back corner of the room and near the exterior door. The manufacturer believes the clear coat was applied before the epoxy had adequately cured. Well, that's it for part one. Log on to ktuniversity.com to see other KTA videos in this series, addressing the hands-on testing to examine the problem, the methods used to collect samples, and the laboratory analysis that was undertaken to determine the cause. While you're on that site, you'll find a listing of other instructional videos that are available for your viewing.